In this video tutorial, I will explain how WebRM supports users working offline when there is no internet connection. Working offline can be useful when an existing internet connection suddenly goes down or when the user has to go to an area where there is no internet connection, so he knows up front that he will be working without the internet. WebRM only supports the second scenario. While it is possible to prepare for working without the internet, if the existing internet connection suddenly drops, you won't be able to continue working with your application. So let's have a more detailed look at the scenario when the user knows up front that he will be working in the area with no internet connection. He takes his tablet, phone or laptop with him and uses this tablet, phone or laptop to add or edit some data with no internet available. Then, when he returns to the office, he wants the data that he has added or modified to be automatically merged with the data in his central database. I will explain what you have to do to support this scenario in your AwareAIM application. The scenario has four separate stages. The user has to prepare for working offline optionally populate offline storage with the data from the central database, work offline, and synchronize data when connection is available. Let's look at each stage in detail. So first, the preparation stage. Before the user goes offline, he has to perform a special operation that puts some data that the system needs into the offline storage and generate a special HTML file. More about it later. This operation also opens a screen that will be used in the offline mode. Most probably, the screen will be represented by a special visual perspective. The user may also need to populate offline storage with data from the central database. It's important to understand that when working offline, everything that the user does is stored in the offline storage, the local storage of the browser. So if the user will be modifying or looking at some existing data, this data needs to be placed in the offline storage prior to going offline. Of course, if the user will only be adding records when offline, he doesn't need to worry about this. So the preparation stage finishes with the system opening a special screen to be used when offline. The user can now take this screen with him and go to the area with no internet connection. What if the user closes the browser or closes the screen used for the offline mode? Well, in this case, the user can point the browser to the HTML file generated by the system at the preparation stage. The, the browser will have cached all the necessary resources and so will, will not need internet connection to open this file. So then the user will be working offline. Nothing special needs to be done by the user during the time when he is actually working offline. The user will be able to add records and or delete or modify the existing records using the operations provided by the developer for the offline mode. So then the user returns to the office where internet connection is available again. He then needs the system to automatically merge the changes he has done while offline with the database of the server. All he has to do in this case is press a button to perform a special operation that will automatically synchronize his changes with the server database. At the end of the process, a WebRAM will display a log in case there were errors during synchronization. Let's now look at what the developer has to do to support the offline mode. First of all, he needs to prepare a special visual perspective that will be used in the offline mode. Why should it be special? Because the offline mode supports only a subset of functionality available normally. So the developer has to carefully prepare a visual perspective that only contains operations available in the offline mode. We will talk more about it a little later. This visual perspective should have a menu command or panel operation that the user will invoke to synchronize the changes with the central database when the internet connection becomes available. The next step is to add a special menu command 
that allows the user to prepare for the offline mode and display in the offline visual perspective. The developer can also optionally add a menu command that allows users to populate offline storage with the data from the system. That's pretty much it as far as the developer is concerned. Let's now discuss which functionality is supported in the offline mode. Let's start with queries. Only standard, custom and calendar queries are supported in the offline mode. Charts, GAN charts and Kanban boards are not supported. It is also important to remember that queries in the offline mode will always return all records available in the offline storage, so any query conditions are ignored. The users will be able to filter the results though. In addition, the following is not supported. Queries on business object groups. Grouped queries. Queries with expansion. Queries using forms. Calendar queries that use resources. Standard and calendar queries with inline editing. Queries showing presentations. Only the following operations are allowed in queries and forms. Operations that create an object. Operation that edit or view an object. Operation that delete an object. Operations that run other queries. All other operations are not supported. Business object forms are supported, both tabs and wizard, provided that a form does not use document attributes, does not use picture attributes other than signatures, does not use multiple references. Single references are supported, provided that they are represented as drop-downs only. Does not use shortcuts. Business rules and applicability conditions. When records are created or modified while offline, business rules are not executed, with the exception of some dynamic rules and rules used in form initialization. More about it a little later. When data is synchronized with the system, business rules get executed, but not all rules. Rules that use the report error action, validation rules, are ignored. Dynamic rules and rules used in form initialization are executed when offline, provided that rules are relatively simple and only involve attributes used in the form and do not use multiple references or shortcuts. Applicability conditions defined for form sections and separators inside a form section are supported, again provided that they only involve attributes used in the form and do not use multiple references or shortcuts. This may seem like a lot of limitations, but the supported functionality can still be very practical and used successfully in the offline mode. Let's now look at an example. I will demonstrate the offline mode using the standard CRM sample application. We will assume that our staff members can visit our customers and work there offline. While offline, they can change some details of the customer add new records about communication with the customer or change existing communication history. They can also add appointments with the customer to the calendar or edit existing ones. I will show you the final result first and then explain how it has been achieved. So here we have the CRM sample application. I have added the offline mode folder with two commands. Prepare and data management. Before I visit a customer, I will click the prepare command. At this point, a WRM populates offline storage with some system data. I can now proceed to go offline or I can populate offline storage with some data from the system. Let's say that today I will be going to a prospective customer and will not need any existing data. So I will click on the Go Offline button and the system displays the visual perspective that I will take to my customer. If I close the browser or the screen for whatever reason, I can point that browser to the URL displayed on the previous screen to display the offline screen again.
So let's say that we're working offline now at the customer side. And after some negotiations, the customer decides to sign up to our service. I need to capture customer details and get his signature. I click on the new button to create a new customer and fill out the form. The new record is displayed in the list. I can edit it if need be. I now return to the office or to the area with internet connection. I click on the Go Online button. And at this point, Aware AM automatically adds the new customer record to the central data database. Let's verify that the customer record has been added to the database. So when we look at the list of customers and search for John, we can see that John Smith record here. Let's consider another scenario. This time I will visit an existing customer. I may need to edit her details if they changed. I also want to show her our communication history and enter a new communication record that captures our discussion. I may also set up a future appointment with the customer. Let's see how we can do this. So before I go offline, I will select the prepare command as before. But this time I need to populate the offline storage with data from the system, the record of the customer I will be visiting and her, and her communication history. So I click on the populate button here. This displays a special screen that allows me to populate the offline storage. First of all, I need to select the business object. Where I am automatically finds all objects referenced in the offline perspective. Let's start with the customer. The top of the screen shows data available in the offline storage and the bottom screen shows customers in the system. Note that the grids show all attributes of the object we don't need to see most of them, so I will only leave relevant attributes and save the settings so that these attributes are always displayed in the future. And I will do the same for the bottom grid. The offline storage has a record of the customer from the previous exercise. We don't need him, so we will delete, fr delete him from the offline storage. Let's say that today we will be visiting J Jane Allison. So I click on the copy selected button and the record is written into the offline storage. Next, we need to populate the offline storage with communication history of Jane Allison. I select the contact node object. Let's get rid of the relevant attributes first.
In the system, there are a lot of communication records belonging to different customers. How do we find records belonging to Jane Allison? Luckily, the list of attributes includes the single reference called correspondent, identifying the customer that the record belongs to. The value of this attribute includes the name of the object and the ID of the customer. So let's go back to the record of Jane Allison and f find out its ID. We can see that the ID is 538906. So we go back to the contact note and filter the correspondent attribute by this ID. So now we can see only communication history of Jane Allison. We will select all of them and copy them to the uh, offline storage. We can now go offline by pressing this button here. The familiar offline mode screen is displayed. So now we assume that we're working with the customer offline. We can see that the list of customers has Jane Allison. If your address or telephone number has changed, we can edit the record. If we go to the Contact Notes tab, we can see communication history of Jane Allison. Let's create a new record to capture results of our discussion. The drop-down of correspondence only contains Jane because this is the only record available in the offline storage. Let's also create a follow-up appointment with Jane. Let's now assume that we are back in the office and we can click on the Go Online button to synchronize the changes. Let's log in again and verify that the changes have been saved. So we, here we can see the changed telephone number of Jane Ellison. Then we can see our review meeting in the communication history. And if we go to the company calendar, we can see the appointment. So everything has been merged correctly. Let's see now how this has been implemented. First of all, I have created a special form for the custom object to be used in the offline mode. The form is special because all other forms use the photo of the customer, but pictures are not supported in the offline mode. On the other hand, the form does capture signatures. I have also created a special form for the contact node object. This form does not use any of the multiple references. Then I have created two queries that show all customers and all contact nodes. I couldn't use any of the existing queries for this as the existing ones use shortcuts not available in the offline mode. The queries also use new edit and delete operations that use special forms for the offline mode. I have also added the Go Online operation to the customer's query. This operation 
performs data synchronization when internet connection is restored and the type is go online. I have also created a new calendar query because the existing one used inline editing uh, to edit appointments. The new query uses create and edit operations for that. Then I have added a special visual perspective called offline. that shows the offline queries in different tabs. Note that you can always check whether a visual perspective is compatible with the offline mode by pressing this button here. And finally, I have modified the administrator visual perspective to add the offline mode folder where I have specified the prepare command of the prepare for offline type that points to the offline perspective and the data management command of the offline data management type. That's all I had to do as a developer. Not much really. Another important consideration is that it is possible to use some of these operations programmatically using processes. There are three new actions of the rule language that are useful for the offline mode. Clear offline data, add offline data, and go offline. The clear offline data action clears either the entire offline storage or removes all instances of the specified business object in the offline storage. The add offline data action populates offline storage with the results of the specified query. And the go offline action prepares the system for the offline mode and goes offline. This means that it is possible to run the process that will automatically populate the offline storage, possibly with the user's help, and will do all necessary steps to go offline.